Welcome to this demonstration video on solar relay circuit. A lot of you have asked the question that what needs to be done if you want a circuit to switch on automatically in case there's a main power cut, in case there's a blackout. So I'm talking here about people who have a solar PV system that is DC and that is isolated from their mains AC supply. They have solar panels, they have batteries, and DC load and your DC load could be fan, light, heater or maybe an alarm and what they want is they want the load to switch on when there's no electricity in the mains power supply. Now most of these questions are coming from people who would like to have a peaceful night's sleep without any interruption. Uh, if there is a power cut in the mains their ceiling fan that is running on AC current switches off and they would like their separate 12 volt DC pedestal fan to switch on when there is a blackout. So this would give them uninterrupted sleep through the night and trust me believe it or not power cuts are very frequent in the developing world. So in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to make that circuit using simple electrical components that you can find easily in your household but let me just give you some background information and theory and it is not necessary that you use this circuit on a solar PV system. You can use it for a variety of systems, a variety of applications. You can use it for emergency lights, security alarm, electric fencing, zombie proofing even and you can use it for AC systems as well as DC systems. Okay, the central component of this simple circuit is an electrical device called the relay. What is a relay? Let's just quickly understand that relay is just a switch that is electrically operated. So unlike other switches that require manual effort, in a relay switching on and switching off is done by an electrical signal. Therefore, relay is a combination of two different circuits as shown in the diagram. So as you can see from the diagram, the relay is a combination of two circuits. One is your circuit with electromagnet. The other is the circuit that you want to control. We will call the electromagnet circuit as the coil circuit. Now what happens is when you switch the electromagnet on, it attracts the metallic bar towards it. The bar flips towards the electromagnet core and as a result touches the terminal that completes the circuit and you will have your device switched on. When the electromagnet is switched off, the metallic bar goes back because of the spring mechanism. Now this type of relay configuration is called a NO relay configuration or normally open relay. When the electromagnet switches on, the main circuit is completed. You can also have an NC configuration which does the opposite. NC is normally closed. That is when the electromagnet switches on, it breaks the main circuit. And you can use NC type configuration in example automatic lights that is when the day start and the sunlight is there the relay can switch off the household light. Now normally relays are available in the market that have both NO and NC configuration they are called 5 pin relays. By choosing the right terminal on the relay, you can have it normally open or normally closed depending upon the type of configuration you want. In the diagram below, the boundaries of the relay are highlighted by the dashed line. You can see a total of five pins sticking out. Two pins are for the coil terminal that operate the electromagnet. One is called the COM terminal and connects to your main circuit. The remaining two are NO and NC terminals only one of which is chosen for completing the connection. Now for most relays you need 12 volt coil current. There's also a voltage and ampere rating for the main circuit in the relay. So now that we know so much about the relay let's cast our mind back and consider the example where we want let's say a DC pedestal fan that is connected to a battery and possibly to a solar panel to switch on when there's a power cut in the main supply. In this case, we will take an AC adapter that is connected to the mains. The adapter will convert the 220 mains into 12 volt DC that will be supplied to the relay as the coil current. While the DC 
fan circuit would be connected to a, the relay in an NO configuration. As soon as the main power goes out, the electromagnet will stop working, the contact bar will be pushed back because of the spring, and the circuit will be completed, your DC fan will be switched on. So let's demonstrate this circuit. I'll make a small scale version of it and you can upscale it with the components that can handle more current. Okay, welcome to my worktop. This is where the magic happens. What I've got is I've got all the components you would be needing to make that automatic power cut switch that we spoke about earlier. So let's discuss these components one by one. First up, we've got a DC brushless fan. Now this is a 12 volt fan that is used to cool a processor. And 12 volt doesn't mean that you have to give it exactly 12 volt. You can run it at a range of voltages. So this one, maybe I can run it from six volts up to 18 volts. It all depends upon the impedance. You can't just increase the voltage endlessly. So you have a range of voltages on which you can run a motor. And the thing is that if you keep on increasing the voltage, the RPM keeps going up. So this is there to basically simulate the pedestal fan that we spoke about. Remember, this is a micro circuit and this is a miniature version of the real circuit that you're going to make at home. Next up, we have got the relay. And you can see the five legs of the relay. You, I got this from my local electronics store. You can also get it, it's available easily. You can also salvage this from a broken old car. So if you look in a broken car, if you look underneath uh, in the bonnet, you'll find that right next to the switchboard or fuse box, you will find the relay board there. And there might be three, four or even five relays and you can easily extract them from there. The automotive relays are quite robust in that they are shockproof, vibration proof, they can sustain high temperatures and you can push a lot more amps through them. In this one, I cannot push a lot more amps because this is not made for that purpose. So this is my relay. I've got some connectors here that I may or may not use. I've got a toggle switch and this toggle switch will help me isolate the circuit. It's good to have that feature in there for safety purposes and it's always a good safety practice to add switches to your circuit. Now this is a 6 volt mercury cadmium battery that will be powering up my fan. So this is the power supply for the fan. You might have a lead acid battery uh, instead of this one powering up your pedestal fan. I've got some cabling here and I've got some insulation tape. And this is the important bit. This is the power supply. So these are all the power supplies that I was able to find in my home and trust me there are more than that. Uh, the reason you'll find so many power supplies at home is all the electronics use them and we have so many electronics that we use nowadays in our home so for instance this one i was able to find for my laptop this one is a 19.5 volt uh, rated output dc you need something basically to convert your mains to 20 volt ac to 12 volt DC and that 12 volt DC would give the coil voltage to this relay here. So this power supply is not useful because it gives me an output of 19 volts. I can't be using that. Uh, this one is for my electric shaver. This one gives me 5 volts. Can't use that. This one is a power supply adapter for my phone this is my phone charger basically again this is 5 volt and 1 amp can't use that but i was able to find out something that gave me 12 volts and that is there you can see output of 12 volts at 5 amps so this one came from my dehumidifier unit so this is this is the dehumidifier unit so i was able to get this off that unit and this should be able to work. Hopefully, it should be able to supply the voltage I need for my relay. Now, it's important to understand what the power supply is. 
and what will happen is this video will run into explaining what exactly a power supply is and how it works. Meanwhile, what I'll be doing is I'll be assembling the circuit. And once I do that, I will show you how the circuit works and how you can use it, how it's all connected. So I'll see you in a bit. In a power supply or an adopter, we normally have four electronic components. First, we have a step-down transformer. Second, we have a full bridge rectifier. Third, we have a capacitor. And fourth, we have a voltage regulator. Let's look at what each of them does individually. The step-down transformer brings down the voltage from 220 AC to 9 volts or 12 volts or 15 volts AC, whatever is required. Note that the output of the transformer electricity remains AC. So the input is AC and the output is also AC current. In the second step, we send this, let's say 15 volt AC current to a full bridge rectifier. The rectifier changes the negative voltage cycle into a positive cycle. The current becomes one directional, but the current is fluctuating. To remove the fluctuation, a capacitor is used. This process is called filtering. The filtration process removes the fluctuation to a large extent but the voltage still has some variation and this brings us to the fourth step. And in this step this variation is removed by a voltage regulator. The voltage regulator evens out the voltage. The output of the regulator however is 2 volts below the input voltage. So to get 12 volts output you should supply at least 14 volts input to the regulator. So now that we have understood what a power supply is, let's get back to our circuit. Okay, welcome back. Uh, my circuit's now complete and I've used a few different components, but I'll explain them why. I've got a different battery than the one I showed you earlier. And the reason for that was the earlier one that I showed you was a six volt battery. This one is a nine volt battery. Remember this fan was rated at 12 volts, so I just discovered that I couldn't basically run it on a 6 volt battery. It was too low for this. Um, however, it works on a 9 volt battery. I've got a different relay here. So it's still a 5 pin relay, but the earlier one that I showed you was a smaller one. This one is an automotive relay, so I'll be using that. I couldn't get the previous one to work and I think the reason for that is um, you know it couldn't push through I couldn't push through more amps through that despite the fact that this uh, only takes a very minuscule amount of amps but anyway I wasn't able to make the other relay work so you can use this you can use any 12 volt uh, automotive contactors uh, or relay switches sorry and most of them would allow a 30 amp 20 amp 10 amp current through them so uh, I'll be using that um, and this is the power supply so you can see the uh, LED indicator shows that it's on and you can see that the fan is off at the moment so power on fan off now in case there's a power cut this fan should come on so that was the idea of this uh, circuit so what I'll do is I'll switch off the mains power and we'll see this fan turning on. Now it may be there's a time lag between uh, power uh, going off and the fan coming on. And the reason is there are, are capacitors inside this and that hold the charge. So, you know, when the charge um, goes down below 12 volts, which is uh, what the power supply is feeding to the relay circuit, relay coils, then you'll see the fan coming on. So there might be a few second lag. So what I'll do is I'll just switch off the power. So I've switched off the power and you can see it's going down and you can see the fan turning on. So you can see the fan here turning on, the fans moving. So as your main if you have a main power cut this fan will come on so it's a very simple circuit you can replicate it at home obviously when you're using bigger batteries you're going to uh, be needing 
um, thicker cables and you can use it for a bigger fan and whenever your battery uh, over here could be connected to a solar panel but make sure when you connect the battery to the solar panel make sure that the solar panel is connected to it through a charge controller so that's it and hopefully I've switched the power back on and you can see the fan going off again that is the relay if you're wondering that's an automotive five pin relay that I used in my circuit and that's the fan in its static position so you can see the fan in its static position just to contrast it with the fan that was moving earlier now if you want to do you can also do a few other things with this arrangement you can for example have an option of charging your battery bank in the main circuit by using the power supply adapter this will ensure that in case if the solar panels are not providing much energy to charge the battery bank then the main power supply can charge it to do this you will have to have the power supply connected to your battery bank through a charge controller and the voltage of the power supply has to be higher than the battery bank voltage you can also use LDR or photoresistor to operate your relay and in that case you can have a light detecting automatic switch and finally if you wanted to simplify this circuit further you can do so by using a power relay and that will eliminate the need for having a power supply and with this the video is concluded please do like the video if you learned something from it and do subscribe to the channel for more such videos thank you for your attention